ลุกตัวครับStrange publishing firm owned by Dan and Bob the Glen, where each new novel is acted out by the Mystery House staff before it is accepted for publication. Mystery House. Well, come on in, gang. We're waiting for you. Hi, Mr. Glen. Got a good story for us back down tonight? Well, you have to ask Bobby about that. How about it, Bob? Uh, it's certainly an unusual story. The kind that has you holding your breath. Holding your breath? Say, so that's old stuff for radio announcers, Bobby. Now, they have to be able to hold their breath for smooth sentences. How do you mean, Tom? Well, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but, uh, well, listen to this. Places, everybody, except the scene, Tom. Danger, man at bay. The next story opens in the living room of a pleasant home. Walt Marvin has just come in and talked to his sister. Lock it, Molly. What? Walt, what are you doing here? You had the papers, didn't you? They're after me. You have come here the first thing. You do right to come here. You'll get me into trouble. Trouble? We don't know what trouble is. On the radio, they said the police had been instructed to kill you on sight. Oh, they did, huh? Well, you can't stay here. You've got to get out. You don't say so. Well, listen to me. Frank and I have our reputations to worry about. That's too bad about you and Frank. You've done nothing but get into trouble ever since you were a kid. You've disgraced the whole family. I remember how Mom... Shut up. This is no time to talk about Mom. Where can I hide? I don't know. Oh. It's going to be like that, huh? You killed a man. You shot him in cold blood. Yeah? But they say it to me. They know. They're smart guys, aren't they? Well, if you hadn't killed him, you wouldn't be running away. You've never had the cops chase you, have you? You've taken care of that for the whole family. I'm going to get thrown in a minute. If a guy's own sister can't give him a break, I don't know who can. I've got my own life to live, Walt. It's been bad enough people knowing you and my brother. All the trouble you've been I've in. I've never been in any real trouble before, kid. This is it, the works. Get the stars out of your eyes and get this straight. This is the showdown. It's me. You are the cops. You should have thought of that when you killed that man. Tell him, Dave. Don't shed any tears over him. He's lucky he didn't get it sooner, lousy little rat. Well, you killed him. Listen, what difference does it make whether I killed him or not? The cops say I did. They're after me. They got their guns loaded and they're all set for a little marksmanship practice. You say I'm a killer. You are. Well, unless you give me some help, you're a killer, too. I'm your brother, ain't I? You're the only person in the whole lousy world I can ask to give me a break. But Dave doesn't like you. If we'd get into trouble by helping you... Oh, Walter, well, this is terrible for me. Don't worry about that, bum. You know, right like to call Frank a bum. He's done a lot better than you have. He isn't hiding from the police. Cut it out. I don't even like to hear you talk about that guy. I've given you money. I've lied to him. I've got you out of jams. And now I have to think about myself. Think about yourself tomorrow. Tonight, think about me. Oh, just this once, Molly. It'll be the last time I'll be honest. Darn it. You couldn't be honest if your life depended on Oh, look, kid. Remember how I bought you a doll on your 10th birthday? You never had one and... You stole the money to get it? Well, what if I did? That's a lot of the things other kids had. Brought up on charity, supposed to be grateful for the scrap people threw us. The point is, I took chances for you. I've always taken chances for you. You never learned to live honestly. I didn't have to be a crook just because we were poor. I've gotten along all right. I have a nice home. I'm happy. Sorry for the love of heaven, cut it out. As soon as those dumb flats are get to thinking, they're going to come here. Oh, Frank will just love that. The whole neighborhood. The neighborhood ain't on the verge of getting filled with lead, is it? I'm... It's too late. They're coming here. Go outside. Shoot it. Get out of here. What are you going to do? I'm going to shoot it out with them. It's not more than four. I might have a chance. Well, huh? you can't murder any more people. That's in your store. Listen, go on, Mr. Sandy. I'll have Frank to good morning. If you didn't kill that Joey Day, I'll see you. You still you. believe in fairy tales, don't you? Listen. I could walk out of here with my hands over my head and they'd still plug me. Go after me. Hey, look. Look, they're getting out of the car now. Up the corner. Smash that pig bank on the mantel. Quick, smash it. I don't need money. What I need... Smash it. But I... All right, I'll do it. Like that. 
I told you I don't need money. Yeah, I... Take it, quick. Put it in your pocket. Now, hit me on the head with your gun. Hurry up. Huh? Huh? Do as I say. There's a big cedar chest with a couple of blankets in it. In my bedroom. After you've hit me, get in and close it. I think I can prepare the place and fight, too. Do as I say. Hit me. Fight. I couldn't hit you, Molly. I... Oh, no. It's not that. Do it. Hit me on the head hard. You've got to do it. Close your eyes. I don't... All right. The same. Well, then he's been here, all right. Then take a look on the floor. A busted china bank. That's the money, the dirty rat. Say, do you suppose he's still around here? Yeah, we'll see, Bertie. But the little lady needs attention. Give her some water. Well, can't the doc take care of her? I'm anxious to get that Walt Marlin. Ah, we'll get him all right, Burton. But get the little lady a glass of water first. Ah, it's a nasty blue she has on the forehead, poor thing. Okay, Flannery, okay. But you Irish are all alike. You let your chivalry get you into the darnest messes. All right, all right. The guy could be getting five blocks away and we're fussing around here. The water, Burton. Get it. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, poor thing. Did he hurt you bad, Kitten? Mm. Must be pretty grim to have a loss like that for a brother. Can't even be decent with his own sister. And her a pretty lass like you. Well, here's the water. Oh. Now hurry it up. Ah, uh, a bit on the oh. forehead and the rest of your mouth. Ah, uh, that's the girl. Ah, uh, see? She's coming through already. I... There now. You'll be all right. We'll have a doctor here in no time at all. He... He's gone, isn't he? We'll take care of him, all right. Now tell us, what happened? Oh, he... He came in with a gun in his hand. He wanted money. He's exerting me. What did he want to go for, did he say? Yes, he... He said he had to get the taxi tonight. He was in trouble... I had to get out of town. He wasn't lying about that. I told him I didn't have any money. He, he saw the little china pig bank on the mantel and, and grabbed for it. And I, I tried to stop him. He screamed at me. I got to get out of town. I reached out to the bank and... Well, that, that, that's all I remember. You think he left you then? We better not come back. He knows what's good for him. I don't blame you for feeling that way. Hitting his own sister like that. But it's all relative of mine. Not after that. You sure you ain't hiding him somewhere's... Please? Listen, he's the only cook in our family. How long ago was this? Well, I, I don't know. Frank, that's my husband, called and said he had to work late. He said he'd be home in about an hour. Then Walt came in right after that. If you don't know what time it was, huh? No, I, I didn't look at my watch. But thank, oh, thank goodness you're home. Molly, I... Oh, police, eh? Molly. Don't tell me that brother of yours has been here. That he has, Mr. Garman. Why, you've been hurt, darling. I'll get that bum and I'll whip him within an inch of his life. Now, uh, now, Mr. Garman. The police will take care of that in fine shape. You got home when you expected, did you? Well, yes, of course. Why? And that means our little pigeons got near an hour's head start on us. Hmm, we gotta find out when their friends leaving for Texas or that general vicinity. And maybe that was a trick. We'll find out when their friends leaving for any place at all. You're sure he isn't here? No, we ain't looked yet. We better take a look around. But Frank, uh, he you wouldn't... better be sure now, darling. If he'll like him, I'm not anxious for any more trouble. Just give the place the once over. That's a good idea. Burton, you run along back to the station and get reinforcements for covering the railroad and bus station. Okay. And I'll send another squad car out to pick you up. Okay. Well, let's get busy. I'll take the coast closet. Mr. Gorman, if you look out in the kitchen. Right. Sign of anybody in any of these closets. I, I don't think he's here. He wouldn't have cared. Uh, you never know, ma'am. A man who's desperate enough to strike his own sister. Uh, there's no sign of him in the kitchen. You better try the bedroom. That's a good idea. This way, officer. But, wouldn't it be silly for him to hide in the bedroom, dear? There's no way of getting out of the house from them without going down Miss Paul. Well, he doesn't have the mentality to figure out a thing like that. Two bedrooms, officer. Let's try this one first. 
Uh, you look under the bed. I'll take a seat in the clothes closet. Right. Uh, not in there, that's true. Say, I wonder now. I wonder if a man could squeeze into that seat or something. I hope there's a look in that office, Mr. It's sort of a catch-all, and I'm afraid it's not very tidy. Oh, don't mind me. I'll just take a quick look. No, no, nothing else. Uh, except a rather untidy bunch of blankets. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I'll get them straightened up tomorrow. Well, at least one bedroom. Let's see it. Yeah, this way. Right, here we are. Look it over. Not much space to hide in there. There you go. Know, I always feel city looking for a person under the bed. Not in the close closet. Well, it just about takes care of this. And if you hear anything from her, let us know. Yes, we certainly will, officer. And it might be a good idea for you to keep a man posted in the neighborhood just in case. Yes, I will. Well, I might as well wait out in front for the squad car. No need of me disturbing you folks anymore. That's quite all right, officer. Well, so long. Goodbye. Well, that's that. You can't imagine how frightened I was when Walt came in and hit me over the head. You, you can quit asking now, Molly. What? I saw that bump on your forehead. I thought perhaps you actually had refused to give that bum any help. Then I looked in the cedar chest. I knew it was all an act, Molly. You, you saw him? Of course I saw him. Well, then why? Why didn't I say anything? You think you can trust that crook? You'd have told the police the whole story. You'd have been thrown into jail right along with him. You had an attitude of a murderer. I didn't want to help you. Frank, honest, I didn't. I had to. You had the business of a skunk. As you write in this with him now, Molly. Well, it was my fault. Let's call the police and say that he came back. But he wouldn't say. I have a gun, dear. When I heard what had happened. I knew just about what to expect. You listen to him get away. No. No. I wouldn't reach for that gun if I were you, Frank. There's nothing I'd enjoy any more than putting a bullet right through your head. And don't think that I have anything to lose. Is Walt Marvin going to kill his sister's husband? And will the police catch him? We'll find out in the second act of tonight's story. Meanwhile, here's a brief message from our sponsor. the living room of the Frank Gorman home. Frank and his wife, Molly, are seated in two easy chairs, and a third voice comes from behind the piano. Keep all the lights on and the curtains up. Let everybody see that they're sitting in your living room. Well, if you had the nerve to come out from behind that piano and fight it out like a man. Yeah, right, Jake, want to talk about fighting like a man, you yellow pup. Going to turn me into the cops without giving me a thing. I've thought it all over, Walt. I'm going to give you enough money to clear out. Get out of the country. You are a fair fellow. Cut it. You must think I'm an awful chap, Frank. I'll give you a thousand dollars case. You can ride a long way on the train for that. You'd sure like to see me try it, wouldn't you? You know that dicks are lined up all over the railroad station. Don't you think you owe Molly a little something? I didn't expect you to show me any consideration, but after all, she's entitled to live a respectable life. Yeah, I guess she is with that, Frank. And she can be mighty proud of you, can't she? But if she goes, people are going to be whispering, that's Molly Gorman. A brother, Walt Marvin. You remember the killer. Tough, huh? I guess it's asking too much to expect you to see it. You can't stay behind that piano forever, Walt. My police are going to be watching this place day after day. And sooner or later, they're going to get you. Once they decide you haven't left town on one of the trains, they'll really concentrate here. And that's going to embarrass you, ain't it? I shouldn't have said that. Embarrassing me seems to make you very happy. You know what I think I hate most about you, Frank? You came from the right side of the track. You had the chance to be a, quite a guy. And you're the lousiest heel I know. No! I, I, I wonder... Answer the door, though. And no funny stuff. That goes for you, too, Frank. Oh, did you... 
Find him after this blind alley? No, we're stuck. And nobody that answers his description can see near the railroad stations. He's still in town, of that we're sure. But he, he might come back here. Indeed, he might. That's what I come to warn you about. I'm afraid we need more than a warning, officer. Oh, don't worry. There's two men outside right now. One in back and one in the front of the house. They got instructions to shoot to kill the minute they see Rolf Marvin. Well, that's some assurance, I suppose, but don't you think you should have a man inside the house, too? But that's silly. What for would I put a man in here when we already got men outside? Oh, I don't know. I, I just wondered. But uh, you look tired, officer. Uh, Molly, why don't you play some music for us? Oh, uh, I, I don't feel like playing this way. Oh, come now, darling. I'm sure Officer Flannery would love to hear some good, lively Irish music. You know, that's one thing about the Marvin Flannery. They all love the piano. Uh, they say most of the Irish is musical. Myself, I never could distinguish a harmonica from a zither. Oh, uh, you don't know anything about pianos, then? Not a thing. That's too bad. I've uh, been wanting someone who knows about them to examine ours. Officer Flannery, uh, t- tell me, uh, who is this? Jerry Berry that my brother supposed to kill. Well, ma'am, exactly what he is is hard to say. But we think he's a hijacker. We got evidence enough to satisfy us that was his business now that he's gone. But then you need to have sorry, Pip. Sorry? Indeed, no. You'd better save us a fair lot of trouble that he did. A smooth operator, they were, with high up connections. How do you know he walked to them? Yeah, not much mystery about that one. Your brother was eating lunch with a bunch of hoods when he got a phone call. He come back to the table and said he had to go over to Jerry Day's office and collect some money. Well, that hardly proves that he murdered the man, does it? Well, he was seen going into Day's office. His Dave called the station saying that he was expecting some trouble from one of his truck drivers and to have a man around handy. Our man was just getting there when Walt Marvin come running out. Our man hollered for him to stop and what does Walt Marvin do but fire a shot at him? Did he hit the place? No, but he knocked the gun out of his hand. By the time Ariarty got his gun again, Walt Marvin had run down the stairwell. Oh, yeah, he went into Dave's office and found a guy with a bullet in his head. My brother, and he isn't afraid to shoot, is he? Oh, he's desperate. Up to now, he's been what you might call a nuisance test. Petty rackets, more bodies than anything else. But you see, ma'am, he gets cornered with a big rap against him. From now on, he's got nothing to lose. I see. He hasn't a chance in the world. He's got his fingerprints. He's in our file complete. He's a marked man. But you haven't found him yet. So what if we don't get him for a couple of days? None of his hoodlum friends there do anything for him. He's too hot. Finally, look out. Too late, Frank. But thanks for trying to tip him off anyway. Where's Marvin? Hey, listen, Marvin. Go down the safe, Molly, so I can come out into the room. Hurry up or I'll shoot. All right. So, you was here all the time. I agree. What do you think I asked you about putting a man inside the house? What do you think I kept talking about the piano? You mean you wasn't hiding him? Hiding him? You idiot. He was back there with a gun on us. The same gun I have on you, Flannery. Did you side check around? Gordon? He's back at the station. All right. I want you to call him. Tell him to bring the star car after you. No. I you feel the barrel of this gun against your head, Flannery. You won't feel it long unless you make that call. Oh, what do you want? You won't get away with this. I kind of think I will, Flannery. Now make that call. And don't try any tricks. as fast as I could, Flint. Step right on in, Barton. No, I wouldn't reach if I were you. I thought you was planning. But it's not hurt, Barton. Nothing but his feelings, that is. He doesn't seem to like my clothes nearly as well as his uniform. When we finally get you in, sonny boy, you're going to get everything in the book. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Let's have the gun, Barton. I won't argue with it. Thanks. Okay. What next? I watched you before you rang the doorbell, Burton. You stopped to talk to the man out in front. You told him you were picking up Flannery, did you? Of course. Flannery called. Well, only because he had a revolver barrel right against the back of me head, Burton. There was nothing I could do. Absolutely nothing, Flannery. And I don't think there's anything Burton can do about the next part of our little performance. What's that? I'm dressed in Flannery's uniform. I have his gun, yours, and mine. I'm going to have one of them in my hand, in my coat pocket. Trained on you. 
I'll have to knock Flannery and my dear brother-in-law out before we leave. You mean it? Exactly. I mean that you and I are going to walk out to the squad car, arm in arm. When we get in, I'm going to drive. And it's going to be quite a trip. You. What are you planning to do to me? When we get far enough away from here, I'm going to give you a slight tap over the head, Burton. Enough to make you sleepy. Once I get outside your dragnet, I'm not interested in you. You'll be interested before you get through, all right. Your descriptions will broadcast all over the state. That's real flattering, Burton. Okay, Flannery. Ready for your sleeping pill? You keep away from me. Oh, Hold still. Either you take it nice or I'll have to shoot. You ain't... Stand back, Burton. You dirty rat. I'll get even with you for this when we pull you in. And don't think I won't remember it. I bet you will, Burton. Kiss. I think I can trust you. I, I don't know what. Now, just remember, any alarm you give is a bullet right through my heart. Remember that and... Well, I don't think I'll have to worry. Okay, Frank. Okay, what? I'll have your gun now, too. I, uh, I don't have any gun. Don't lie to me, Frank. You start to pull one out when I walk in on you. Hand it over. Uh, all right. Sure, here. Yeah. 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 Poor damn fool, you. Stand back, Burton. I'm still on my feet. I still got a gun. Get a knife, says Quick. A knife? Yeah, quick. Get bullet out of my stomach. Got to, got to throw away. Why did, I don't understand. Hurry, hurry, got to, got to get bullet. I, I didn't want you, uh, cops to know. To know what? In me and, and one and day will be same. Mike's been framing me a long time. He's a fence. For day, kill day, he call me and the cops. Didn't want you to didn't want you to know this. But had to had to get the gun. Frank, is it true? Of course not. He's trying to get even with me for shooting him. If it isn't true, give officer Burton his gun. Give it to him. That's a good idea, Mr. Gorman. I'll give it to you. Right in the heart. Keep away from me. Listen, you're going to get it anyway. If I kill you and Molly, Flannery will think the worth of it. <laughs> so, you've known all along I was framing you, Walt. Oh, sure. Yeah, and you're a bigger sap than I thought. <laughs> Sis, I'm, I'm crazy about you. You're, you're that much in charge, Frank. <laughs> Better for a six, six way, thanks. That was pretty nice shooting for a man with a bullet through his stomach wall. Of course, yes. Sorry, girl. Oh, we've got to get you to the hospital. Burton, you call him in here. Get a doctor. I, I guess it's no use, Mrs. Gorman. I love him, but... I know. I know. You just lost yourself quite a guy. Thank <laughs> you. 